Ira Combs Jr. truly gave Bonner World a very wonderful Christmas with very generous gifts. Lori Anderson keeps up her unbelievable streak with an incredibly charitable gift of her own. We thank everyone else on the screen as well for supporting the channel. Without you we cannot continue to keep the content fresh. Enjoy the episode. I say God came in to the situation. Praise the name of our God. And you better stop acting cute. Praise on trying to look Presbyterian and trying to look Catholic. Those are the folks who enslaved you. You need to thank Pentecostal, honey. Praise the name of our God. Hallelujah. You need to act Pentecostal and shout until your shoes drop off and praise him until your mouth gets tired. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, God. Praise the Lord. 
Why don't you tell somebody I'm glad to be saved? Glad to be saved. Oh, hallelujah. It's from Pastor's coming to you. From Solomon's temple, the church in the heart of the city, and the people of the city in its heart. The church chosen by Jesus Christ for the blessing of multitudes. You will be blessed right here at Solomon's temple. Praise the Lord. Through this ministry, miracles will come into your homes, into your hearts. Miracles will come into the hospital wards. The sick will be healed. The, the, the downtrodden will be picked up. The confused will be given a perfect sense of value. This broadcast is coming to you full of the joy, full of the power, full of the anointing of God. You will be blessed. Praise the name of God. Oh, I feel him. I feel him. Praise the Lord. Lord, I praise you. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Those of you in Martinville, Virginia, praise the Lord, we're coming your way. Those of you in Martinville on the 23rd and the 24th, praise the Lord. We will be in Martinville at the Mount Sinai Apostolic Church, number 7, Peter Street. Pastor, the pastor and congregation will be waiting for us. We will be rolling in there and Jesus Christ is going to meet us there as we come to the end of this millennium. The Lord is sending me around to different parts of the country telling folks it isn't the, it isn't the uh, Y2 thing to worry about. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Saints, don't worry. Cast all your cares upon me, said the Lord, because I care for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't you know the, this, this Y2K thing? Praise our God. You don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. Only God knows. And those of you that got caught up in this Y2K thing, you don't know what you're doing. Praise the Lord. The Lord told you, the Lord is my light and he is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. No matter what happened, praise the Lord. The ship can't sink. Praise the name of our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. The Lord is in control of his universe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So be still, he said, and know I'm God. Don't worry, saints. Everything is going to be all right. unto the Lord all ye lands. Let us sing forth his name and make his praise glorious. What is the highest praise unto the Lord? Glory to you, Lord. And we praise the Lord because he is so worthy to be praised. And we thank him for once again he has allowed us to come into your hearts and homes this hour of truth broadcast with Pastor William L. Bonner, and we're delighted that the Lord has given us this opportunity once again. And we can truly say that we are glad to be in the service just one more time. We want you to know that our hearts, our arms, and our doors are open, and we invite you to come and join us in any one of our anointed services. You will be blessed when you come out and join us for service in Detroit, Michigan. Worship with us here at Solomon's Temple. We're located at 2341 East Seven Mile Road. In New York City, we invite you to the Greater Refuge Temple, located at 2081 Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard. In Jackson, Mississippi, come and fellowship with us at Refuge of Jackson. You'll find us at 
4456 Medgar Evers Boulevard. In Washington, D.C., we welcome you to come out and worship with us at Refuge of Washington, where we're located at 420 56th Street Northeast. And if you reside in the Columbia, South Carolina area, you'll want to make your way out to the elaborate headquarters of the South. That's Refuge of Columbia. And we're located at 4450 Argent Court. Blessed be God, for he has not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. But truly, God has heard me and has attended to the voice of my prayer. Here at Solomon's Temple, every Saturday morning, beginning at 6 o'clock a.m., hundreds of people from the Detroit area come here to have the Lord attend to the voice of their prayers. Why don't you join us this Saturday for our prayer service? Pastor Bonner leads us into prayer at 6 o'clock a.m. We fall upon our faces, cry out unto the Lord, and when we rise up, we have nothing less than victory. Stop toiling with that problem and give it over to the problem solver. Meet us here this Saturday at Solomon's Temple at 6 o'clock a.m. for our shut-in prayer service. We'd like to thank all of our viewers, radio and television supporters, and contributors for your continued support of the Hour of Truth broadcast. It is because of your financial support to this ministry we're able to go out into the hearts and homes, some places on a daily basis and others on a weekly basis, and minister the word of Jesus Christ. If indeed this ministry has been a blessing to you, what we need you to do is sit down today and write Pastor Bonner. Let him know exactly how the Lord has blessed you through the Hour of Truth ministry. We also ask that you please include a financial contribution to this ministry so that every time you tune us in by radio or television, we'll be right here ready to lift up the name of Jesus with you. You can send all of your correspondence to Solomon's Temple in care of Pastor William L. Bonner. 2341 East 7 Mile Road, Detroit, Michigan, 48234. We also like to remind all of our viewers and friends that if you would like today's sermon on audio or video cassette or any of Pastor Bonner's sermons, you can go to visit or write the Last Word Bible Bookshop that's located inside of the Royal Palace Mall. The address is 2400 East 7 Mile Road, Detroit, Michigan, 48234. Or you can simply call area code 313-891-5613. We also encourage you to pick up a copy of the authorized biography entitled, And the High Places I'll Bring Down, Bishop William L. Bonner, The Man and His God. This book will make a beautiful gift or something you would like to add to your library. Again, that's at the Last Word Bible and Bookshop, located inside of the Royal Palace Mall. The address is 2400 East 7 Mile Road, Detroit, Michigan, 48234, or you can call area code 313-891-5613. And the book of James it lets us know that the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. So while you're in prayer on this week, we ask that you please remember these names from our hospital prayer list. Roxanne Eccles, Jackie McGregor, John Potts, James Miller, Sterling Strickland, Dorothy Mattox, Dorothy Smith, Herman Washington, Mabel Winson, Marlene Moore, Ann Spence, Ozell Benjamin, and Annette Rogan. We know that prayer truly changes things. Last but not least, let me share with you a letter from the pastor's desk. It reads, Dear Pastor Bonner, Greetings in the name of Jesus. I want you to know how blessed my family and I have been through the television ministry of Solomon's Temple. I was introduced to your ministry by my father, Dr. R.T. of Ann Arbor, Michigan. The lesson you taught on the lying theology practiced in and dismantled through the white segment of the Christian church was a wonderful blessing to the entire body of Christ. You have also taught me a great deal about overcoming the daily trials of the world through faith and prayer. Your spirit-filled messages have reinforced our knowledge of the power, hope, and victory we have in Christ Jesus. At this time, my financial and material resources are limited, 
As my family and I continue to pray with you and for you and your congregation, we ask that you and the members of Solomon's Temple pray in agreement with us to unleash the blessings of God for us all. Until we are able to worship and praise the Lord with you in person, please sow the enclosed donation and to the ministry as you see fit. Thank you. We love you in the Lord. Sincerely, GT. We thank you so much for your letters and we ask you to continue to write. Be encouraged, remembering always that every day we get reveals God's constant love with mercies new from heaven above. Through ages past, his word has stood. Come on, taste and see that God is still good.
the word of God. That's the word of God. With his stripes, I am healed. By his power, I am healed. By his spirit, I am healed. Each of you touch each other's hand and say these words with me. Somebody is sick in the hospital, at home. In the name of Jesus, I command healing in that person's body. For by his stripes, you are healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are healed. You are healed. Oh, you're the hustle of it. Oh, I am a Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Turn with me to the book of Revelations, chapter 2, and you'll find these words recorded. Hallelujah. Chapter 2. Verse 3. Verse 3. Has bone, has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do your first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly, and remove the candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. My subject is not an exciting one, but it's from the Lord. Someone needs to repent. Someone needs to repent. Repentance is an absolute necessity for people to have a continuous fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Repentance is an absolute necessity. And yet, it doesn't seem to fit in the life of a child of God to have to say to a child of God, you need to repent. You would think, children of God, live so that they don't have to repent. But according to the book of Revelations, when Jesus Christ took John into the Spirit, up into the heavens of heavens, he sent a message back to his churches at Asia Minor, and each of those churches are named in chapter 2 and chapter 3. But the message wasn't just to those seven churches. It was for all churches. It was merely addressed to the seven churches. He selected seven of the many churches was scattered about through Asia Minor, through Palestine, through 
parts of Africa and other parts of the world at that time. He calls upon the church to repent. He didn't send this message to sinners. He sent it to saints. He didn't send this message to an idolatrous world. He sent it to the church. He didn't ask sinners to repent. He asked saints. Note, unto the angel of the church at Ephesus write these things, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, and who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Note, the letter is addressed to the angel of the church, which is the minister. To the angel at Ephesus, to the church at Ephesus, I'm writing to you and I want you to be cognizant of the fact that you're shouting, having a good time, but you have fallen. And you have lost your first love. And I want you to stop shouting for a while and just repent. Just repent. Then you can go back to shouting. I don't want you shouting in your sins. Thank you, sir. I want you to get rid of your sins. <laughs> and then I want you to shout. Ephesus, you have lost your first love. You have left your first love. Now, when you replace your love for Jesus Christ with another love, then you got that other love in the wrong place. There is a special seat that belongs to Jesus Christ. And no one but no one is to sit in that seat but Jesus Christ. And when we sit someone else in that seat, it displeases him. Therefore the church at Ephesus, he said, I have somewhat against you. Note. Imagine God having something against me. I mean, it's bad enough when you've got something against me. I mean, <laughs> praise your Lord, hallelujah. But when the Lord has something against me, that's depressing. Because God can't bless me if he has something against me. <laughs> and I want my blessing to me. And I don't want nothing to block those blessings. I don't want nothing to hinder those blessings. Because no one can bless you but God. People can do you a favor. But if you want the blessings, the real kind, my help cometh from the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So he says to the Ephesus church, I have something against you. And I want you to take a look at yourself. Because you have left your first love. 
You have left your first love. You don't love me the way you used to love me. You used to love me so much until you wouldn't think of having an order against somebody. You wouldn't think of backbiting anybody. You wouldn't think of gossiping about anybody. You wouldn't think of being envious of anyone. You wouldn't think of missing prayer meetings. You wouldn't think of sitting in church, not praising the Lord. But look at you, he says, you have left your first love. Hallelujah. And he calls it a fallen state in verse 5. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. You have failed. You have failed. And I'm going to help you to get up. I don't want you down. I want you up. But I can't pick you up until you repent. You have to open the door for me to pick you up. If you repent, I will pick you up. If you repent, I will wash you in my blood and I will pick you up from your fallen state. As we come to the end of this millennium, I asked the Lord, what is your message to the church? And he says to me, someone needs to repent. Don't leave this old millennium with all that stuff that you need to dump and get rid of. Don't do that. Don't do that. You worry about the, the Y2K thing, whatever the thing is. Worry about sin, honey. Praise the Lord, honey. Get rid of it. It's a cancer eating at your soul. It's a cancer just eating away at your joy. It's a cancer. And you've got to be healed of this cancer that dreaded disease that takes so many people out of this world got to get rid of it so he says to Ephesus remember from whence you have fallen remember how you used to love me I want you to love me again I want you to praise me the way you used to praise me you have become a church just like all these other churches who will do anything commit any kind of sinful act commit adultery and fornication and sit right up in church as if though you haven't done anything oh god hallelujah thank you jesus you sit in church knowing that you need to repent you sit in church knowing that if you don't repent, you're going to hell. Who going to take a chance like that? Knowing that your next breath may be your last breath. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. No one has a guarantee that you're going to live beyond this breath that you're breathing right now. Every time you exhale and inhale, that might be your last breath. If you don't believe it, go to the hospital and see how many people are going to the morgue every day who have breathed their last breath. 
and you don't have to go to a hospital look at folks who's sitting at home killing over with heart attacks dying all of a sudden there was nothing wrong with them they didn't have a prolonged illness they just had a heart attack and died hallelujah thank you Jesus what do you want from me Jesus I want you to make it right with me before you breathe your last breath I don't want the folks making a, me out of a liar and then they're gonna get up and put you in heaven and they know you went to hell Thank you, thank you. hallelujah no man can put you in heaven but the man who got the keys to heaven praise the name of God and the man who got the keys to heaven is not Pastor Bonner it's not your minister your minister can't take you to heaven hallelujah the Pope can't take you to heaven I don't care how many candles he burned and how many Marys he called on if you go to hell you're in hell until Jesus Christ resurrects you and I'm saying no saint has any business going to hell and every saint ought to say to herself and to himself if I need to repent I will repent I am not going down to hell Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I want you to repent. Do your first work. Over. Suppose I don't repent, Jesus. And he says, I tell you what I'll do if you don't repent. I'll move the candlestick out of its place. Hallelujah. I'll set you aside. Hallelujah. I won't even listen to your cries. Hallelujah. Suppose I don't repent. Suppose I just continue to hurt people. Supposing I just continue to destroy people. Supposingly I just continue to be a lover boy. Supposingly, I just continue to run from flower to flower. Supposingly, supposingly, I choose to do that, Jesus. Will you let me come in when I finish my work done here? Judas says, no. No. I will not let you in. I will not let you in. Hallelujah. Except you repent. He's talking to the angel of the church and to everybody in the church who is guilty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's talking to the preacher. Talking to Pastor Bob. Talking to your pastor. Praise the Lord. You got to repent. Thank you, Jesus Christ. You have to repent, honey. The blood can't wash nothing that isn't repentant. You say the blood is just like it was in olden time, but the blood didn't wash nobody in olden time until they repented. When they repented, the blood started washing. Started washing. Lord, I praise you. Thank you, Jesus Christ. And to the church at Tarathara, he said to that church, I gave that woman space to repent. Which means I gave her time. Why do you want her to repent, Jesus? is because she's a liar she called herself a prophetess i didn't call her 
she called herself and then the pastor of the church took her and ordained her and put her over my servants and I want you to know I got something against you and I'm not only telling you that I got something against you I'm telling you you got to repent you got to stop lying and say the Lord called me when the Lord didn't call me 50% of the preachers in the pulpit, God didn't call them. Somebody else called them. God never called a woman and put her over a man. Praise the Lord, that's not the Bible. The head of the woman is the man. Not the head of the man is the woman. Get your thing straight, honey. Praise the Lord. I won't this woman to repent she's lying she says she's a prophetess she's not a prophetess praise the Lord hallelujah I never put a woman over a man in the house in the church under the church under the house and nowhere else praise the Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus Christ Lord I pray you ought to be shouting all over this place praise the Lord hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. And I want her to repent. I want her to repent. And if she don't repent, I'm going to kill her children. Now, this is Jesus talking about killing somebody. Why would Jesus want to kill somebody? Why? Well, that's what he said. I'm going to kill them. I'm going to kill your children with death because you lied you didn't tell the truth you lied for a position and how many ministers not just women but men also occupying a position that they ought not to occupy thank you, Lord. Thank you Jesus Christ they ought to be at the altar saying hallelujah praise of not over a church Thank you, Jesus, half drunk. Some preachers drink more liquor than a fish can drink water. Praise and then get up and parade as if though he's in the spirit. He's in the spirit, all right. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. In the spirit of the devil. Praise the Lord. So the Lord said, I gave her space to repent and she repented not. And because she didn't repent, I'm going to kill her children. I'm going to kill every one of them. Don't you make God angry with you. I didn't hear nothing. Coming to the end of this millennium, everybody ought to look under the house, look under the bed, look everywhere. Find out how you stand with God Almighty. Praise the name of our God. You know what's going on between you and somebody else. You know what kind of life you live in. You know how you live in every day of your life. You ain't in no dark corner. The Lord see everything we do and he hear everything we say. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. And as we come to the end of this millennium, he says, I want you to repent. I want you to repent. I want you to make wrong things right. Hallelujah. I want you to make it right with your brother and your sister. The one that you hurt and stepped on and walked on. And praise the name of our God. That brother and that sister that you've been backbiting and undermining. Praise are trying to pull them down and trying to stop them from living holy. Praise that brother and that sister that you went to bed with and still singing in the choir, still clapping your hand and patting your feet. Praise the name of our God. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to get it straight before this old millennium get away from here. Go to God as he has asked us to and repent and do our first work over again. 
Lord, I praise you. How many of you ought to be praising God? Sitting down with wind in your jaws. Praise God. Sitting down with an attitude. Sitting down with a stubborn spirit. I'm not going to praise him. Praise her. You better praise him. Praise the name of our God. Hallelujah. With your sophisticated sex. With your peacock attitude. Praise the name of our God. Do you know where God brought you from? Do you know what God got you out of? Huh? Don't you look down at the Bible. You look up at me. Praise the name. I'm talking to you. Praise the name of our God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what the word says. Praise the name of our God. Hallelujah. You need to repent, brother. You need to repent, sister. You need to make it right with God and come to church and shout all over the place and say, I've been redeemed. I've been washed. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. You don't want this whole millennium to go out and you still in sin. Hallelujah. You don't want this whole millennium to go out and you still fornicating and committing adultery. You don't want this millennium to go out and you still lukewarm. Praise the Lord. You still Passing a church sister when you ought to be sitting on the missionary board. Praise the Lord, I didn't hear nothing. You don't want this to happen to you just because God didn't slap you down. It don't mean he has approved of what you're doing. Praise God. He gave you space to repent. He gave you space. You better take the opportunity that God has given you. This space that God has given you to make it right. Go on and make it right. So you can praise God in the beauty of holiness. Praise the name of our God. The Pentecostal church is sinking into the congregational church. Praise the denominational church. Praise the cold as yesterday's mashed potatoes. Praise the Lord. Can't hardly get a praise through. Folks have stopped being anointed. Now they're waving their hands. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the You need to replace waving hands with an anointed hand. Praise the Lord. You know when the anointing get in your hand and your hand jump up. Praise the Lord. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about style. That's style. That's style. And anointing is different from that. Anointing touch you in your head. Run out your feet. Praise the name of our God. Lord, I praise you. Somebody needed anointing before 19, I mean the new millennium come in here. You need an anointing, honey. And you need a testimony. And you need a praise. And you ought to learn before the new millennium come how to praise you. You have forgotten how to praise you. Praise the Look at you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you so deep until the Holy Ghost can't find you. The Holy Ghost been trying to find you for weeks. Can't find you. You're too deep. You've been around too long. Praise the name of our God. Don't you know the spirit is the same today that it was yesterday? The spirit don't care how old you are. He still pick you up and turn you around. The spirit don't care nothing about your rheumatism. The, the, the spirit will take your rheumatism, send it to hell, and tell you to praise the Lord. Give God the glory. Give God the praise. Praise his eternity because he's worthy to be praised. And somebody ought to praise him just like you used to praise him. Praise the name of our God. And never mind about these folks who say you're too loud. You keep too much noise. You ought to tell them like I tell them. You don't know what the Lord did for me. Praise the Lord. 
<laughs> you don't know where he brought me from. You don't know what he got me out of. You don't know how, how I've been in hell and the Lord heard my cry. You don't know how he healed my body. You don't know how he saved my soul. You don't know. I have to praise him. I will praise him. I will. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. So Jesus says, I gave you space. I gave you time to make it right. I gave you time to make it right and you wouldn't do it. Now I'm going to kill somebody. Lord, help me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord isn't going to get me for not living right. The Lord isn't going to get me for not praising him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when Solomon's temple reached the point that you all don't want to praise him, please tell me so I can take my name off the cornerstone and go to some other city where people want to praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. The Lord saved me to praise him. He saved you to praise him. He didn't save you to sit and look cute. He saved you to praise him. Somebody got to praise him. If you don't praise him, the rock's gonna praise him. The mountain's gonna praise him. The hill's gonna praise him. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise him in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts, for his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of a trumpet, with the sorcery and how, with the tamarind and the dance. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Let everything. Let everything. Let everything. Let everything. Let everything that has breath. Has breath. Has breath. Has. Oh, hallelujah. Everything. Everything. Everybody. 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 Lay that thing down. Lay your sins down. Confess your sin. Do it right now. Say, Lord, forgive me. And let's praise him. Let's glorify him. Let's magnify him. Let's give him the glory. Let's give him the honor. Let's give him the glory. Let's give him the honor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody, you got two hands. You got two feet. Praise the Lord. Praise him with your hands. Praise him with your feet. Praise